Nintendo's Amiibo figures look great as they are, but customizing is a way of making them even more special. I'm TJ, and it's my mission to make the map that removes the mystery from Amiibo to help you chart the course to conquer your favorite custom challenges and achieve the unique and personalized Amiibo you always wanted. Let me make the mistake so you don't have to. Adventure time! I'm bored already! That's me, TJ, and Dark TJ. They'll be popping up from time to time to offer some tips, tricks, and helpful hints. Don't listen to anything this guy has to say. He has no idea what he's doing. Or not so helpful. It's dangerous to go alone, so come with us and we'll conquer this custom together. Welcome to Custom Conquest. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us and welcome to the season finale of Custom Conquest. Now, if you've been following the show, you know that the last seven episodes have been dedicated to making the Koopaling, so I thought that for this one, we'd go out with a bang. Custom Clown Car Spectacular! Sheesh, how many Bowser Jr. Amiibo do you have? Kind of a lot. Since we have all of these extra Koopaling cars, uh, if you will, I thought we would try to find some creative ways to approach making some original customs. And all the Koopalings were based on a specific trophy that I was trying to match. So for this, I thought maybe I would try to find some fun ways where I could exercise a little bit more creative license. So I thought I'd use the wedding principle. Something old, something new, something borrowed, and, well, something blue and maybe a little extra secret surprise in there for you too. I was also really excited about the prospect of deconstructing a Skylander amiibo, or... I believe the word you're looking for is sky amiibo. Thanks for that. sky amiibo. I could see what made it work. Does it have the same guts as an amiibo? I don't know, so let's pull this big bad Hammer Slam Bowser apart, see what makes him tick, and see if we can't transform him into something even cooler. Can his clown car have a cannon? It's gonna take ages to fix that Happy Meal reject. Come on now, is that really necessary? Uh, all right, look. I don't wanna dedicate this episode to making fun of the Skylanders. I think that anybody who has taken a close look at the Skylander and compared it to an Amiibo, we can agree that there is a discrepancy in quality, but I'm ambitious that we can find something really awesome to do with it, transform it into something to make it even better than it was ever going to be. Big Womp! I've made more impressive pieces of art on the toilet! Yeah, am I gonna have to ban you from this episode? Don't pretend those Skylander pooper chargers even deserve to sit on the same shelf as an amiibo! He's right. Let's get started. With the custom clown car character collection, I definitely strained the limits of the difficulty scale. Even though the degree of reposing wasn't near as extensive as any of the Koopalings, they definitely pushed my creativity and my technical ability to the limits. The arsenal of tools and pieces that I used grew to be somewhat extensive, so I'm going to use this section to highlight some of the key components, and I'll mention any additional elements as they come up. Let's start with the components, which covers our figures, pieces, and parts. To get things started, I need to have the Bowser Jr. Amiibo. For one of them, I customized into a Bowser Jr. variant, but for the other four, all I needed was their cars. Next up is that Bowser Skylander Amiibo. I was really curious to take this thing apart to see how it was put together. Plus, that pathetic Happy Meal toy was in some desperate need of an upgrade. Well, since you mentioned it, I do actually recall picking up a Bowser Happy Meal toy not that long ago. If we do a side-by-side -side comparison, we can see that, in a number of ways, the Happy Meal toy actually has a tighter and cleaner paint job. But all in all, I have to say the sculpt of the Bowser Skylander is actually really good, and the paint job just doesn't do it justice. I also used a Jack-specific 2.5-inch Fire Mario figure. And because these figures don't have NFC chips, and it is important to me that it functions as a Mario Amiibo, I'm gonna need to pull the NFC chip out of a Mario Amiibo. Next up, I've got my Jack's 2.5-inch Ice Luigi. And the same thing goes for Mario's bro. I'm gonna swipe the NFC chip from a Luigi Amiibo. And last on the list, I used a Princess Peach Amiibo and the Toad Rook chess piece from the Mario-themed chess game. Now let's jump over to the equipment side of thing, which covers the tools and supplies. I used multiple different pliers for this depending on the application, and for times when I needed a really precise grip, I also used a pair of tweezers. You may find you need some sculpting putty and super glue. The sculpting putty will help to fill in any unwanted holes in the clown car, and obviously the glue is going to lock down our added components in place. You're going to need some paint and brushes. Hammer Slam Bowser's paint job was pretty extensive, and all of the clown cars were completely repainted. But for that, I used spray paint. You're gonna need a cutter and some sandpaper. I used an X-Acto knife for trimming things down to size. And I used a variety of different sandpapers, ranging from very coarse to very fine. And finally, for some of the more extensive alterations, I turned to a rotary tool and a power drill. Bowser Jr.'s clown car is made out of a very hard plastic, and you're gonna have a really hard time trying to cut through that with an X-Acto knife or a box cutter. So at least for the customs that I had in mind, this was a must. In total, this episode's gonna feature five different clown car customs, but my approach was somewhat different to what you may have seen in previous episodes. Four of them required very little attention paid to the actual figure, and most of the work went into actually customizing the clown car, so the only one that I extensively planned out in advance was the one that I knew was gonna be the most work, and that was Hammer Slam Bowser. Hammer Slam Bowser is crying out for a custom more than any other figure I've seen. 
First of all, the paint job is really unacceptably sloppy, particularly where the eye placement is concerned. Yeah, for some of them, the left eye is halfway off the face! But after spending so much time with the Koopalings, it just felt right to top off the collection with their big bad dad. And since the theme of the episode is clown cars, one of the first things we're gonna do is put him in a clown car. Oh, come on, you could do better than that! Yeah, what if we gave him one of those super cool cannons? Why not, that looks cool. So to achieve this, we're gonna have to open up the front of the clown car, reconstruct the lips, and find something we can use for the cannon. I'm not gonna do any repositioning, but I will have to remove the lower part of Bowser where he connects to the clown car. While I do think the armor is a super cool design, the flat color just isn't working for me, so let's splash a little red on there. I'm also gonna highlight the triangle in the center of his chest plate. And to give credit where credit is due, there are a lot of great details in this sculpt that just go unnoticed because of the flat paint job. So let's see about getting some black outlines in there to help it pop. I think the spikes on the hammer could certainly stand to be differentiated from the red of the shell caps, and it'll help tie him into the shoulders if we dust him with some silver. I'm not really digging that Christmas tree vibe I get from the stick, and we can tell from the sculpt that it has a wood grain to it. So let's restore it to a natural brown. Something's missing. You know you're right. The supinated position of the front hand combined with the angle of the fingers almost looks like he's clutching some imaginary object. So, why should it stay imaginary? Bowser already looks like he means business, but let's add something that makes him look even more destructive. So I'm gonna drop a lip a bomb into that hand. That looks awesome! And the clown car really puts the sky in Skylander. Shut up! When customizing more than one figure at a time, I very often jump around from figure to figure. But in the presentation of the episode, I usually edit it to make it a little bit more comprehensive. But in this case, since a lot of the process was spontaneous and unplanned, I'm gonna take you through it in the chronological order that it occurred, rather than restructuring it to feature each character individually. I need to remove Bowser Jr. from the clown car. It's a simple enough matter to just heat him up and then pop him out, so that we've got a nice standalone clown car. For Bowser's clown car cannon, I decided to use a 2.5 inch Jack Specific Piranha Plant. So our first mission is to do all the required disassembly. I'm gonna drop Bowser in the boiling water, and also my piranha plan. Leave him in the boiling water for about a minute or so, and that should soften him up. Do be careful as you pull Bowser out, because there are a lot of places where the boiling water can get trapped, and I did manage to burn myself pretty good. What's the deal with Skylanders and water traps anyway? So wiggly! The piranha plant pops apart no problem, and when it's warm, the pipe is surprisingly pliable. Pulling Hammer Slam Bowser apart was not terribly dissimilar from any of my amiibo experiences. However, the NFC chip does look a lot different. I'm not sure exactly what I expected, but in this case, it's a rigid red disc. Now by this point, I've probably boiled or baked over 50 amiibo, and not a single NFC chip ceased to function. So the first thing I wanted to see was if the same holds true for the Skylander chip. I can confirm that there is no obvious exterior damage, but I regret to inform you that the chip no longer functions as an amiibo. If I had to guess, given that the integrity of the device appears to be physically intact, I'm going to have to assume that the extreme heat of the boiling water was just a bit much for it. I don't own Skylander, so I can't speak as to whether or not it still continues to function as a Skylander, but for my purposes, this chip is essentially useless. Because I still want it to be a Bowser Amiibo, that means I'm gonna have to use another Bowser Amiibo NFC chip. Fortunately for me, I do have a couple extra from my Roy and Morton Koopaling Customs. I'm gonna pull the rest of Hammer Slam Bowser apart piece by piece. Even though this goes well beyond what's required for my custom, I wanted to do as thorough of a deconstruction as possible. Most of his body came apart pretty easily. I will add for Bowser, because of how many pieces as he has and because he cools pretty quick. I did have to throw him in the hot pot two or three times. Unlike the Smash or Mario Party series amiibo, neither the upper nor the lower part of Bowser's jaw are molded to his head. One of the main things that bugged me about Bowser's hammer is how choked up his grip is. The stick is segmented, so I'm gonna redistribute them a bit to balance out the grip a little bit more. I really like the scale of the green pipe for the cannon, but I need to make sure it's a really tight fit. So I'm gonna trace it out with a pencil so I know exactly how much of the clown car I have to remove. Then I'm going to use my rotary tool to cut out a chunk large enough for me to wedge the pipe in there. Once I know I have the size I need, I'm gonna sand out the rough edge. For Bowser's bob instead of sculpting it, I'm gonna use a leftover Dragon Ball that I have from a Dragon Ball Z figure. The Dragon Ball was almost the perfect scale to fit into Bowser's hand, but to train the fingers into the perfect grip, I softened him up with some boiling water and wedged it right between his fingers. I'm gonna snip off the base of the piranha plant to use as the piece that connects the wick to the bomb. And for the wick itself, I'm gonna use a paperclip. I'll flatten out a small portion of the Dragon Ball with some sandpaper so that I have a flush edge that I can fit the wick to, and I'll put a tiny little hole in it with a thumbtack so that I can feed the wick right into it. To finish off the bob I added a couple milliput eyeballs. I want to maximize the amount of Hammer Slam Bowser that I can use and still convincingly fit into the clown car, so I'm gonna separate him right above the lower rim of his shell. I'll make the corresponding cuts on his legs and his armor until we have a perfect fit. Even though I didn't really need to dismantle his head at all for this custom, since I did, I might as well improve upon his muzzle area as much as I can. So I filled in the factory seams with some milliput so that the entire mouth would look like one smooth solid piece. I also used milliput to fill in the hole in my cannon and to sculpt the new lips of the clown car. For the Mario and Luigi custom figures, I didn't really need to do much, but the position the position of their hands and fingers weren't really working for the design that I wanted. I wanted Mario's fireball to be in his right hand, and I wanted Luigi's ice ball to be in his left hand. 
Fortunately, I was able to reconcile this just by switching him around a little. I removed Mario's right hand and both of Luigi's hands. I really couldn't put anything in Mario's right hand since it was clenched into a fist. So I gave him Luigi's right hand, connecting it with the paperclip. And I really liked the way that the fireball fit in. And Mario returned the favor by letting me use his clenched fist for Luigi's right hand. For Luigi's left hand, I'm gonna use the hand of the Smash Brothers Mario Amiibo, and I'll use my X-Acto knife to trim off the paint residue. Even though I could have just repainted a Mario fireball to give it more of an ice tone, I wanted it to have a transparent quality. So I reconstructed it out of hot glue. I knew that I was gonna wanna reshape it a little bit, so I applied it to the end of a paperclip, let it drip into shape, and then once it was dry enough, I laid it flat on its side and added as needed. By building it around the paperclip, it allowed me to adjust the curve of the ice ball according to my need. My ice ball has this nice foggy transparency, but I want to wash it with a little bit of light blue just to give it a little bit more of an icy quality. Once I figured out exactly where I wanted Mario and Luigi to be connected to their cars, I heated them up a little in some boiling water to make them nice and soft, and then I can cleanly separate them with an X-Acto knife. When I first started putting these together, I was only going to make Bowser, Mario, and Luigi, but as I was inspecting some of the other components of the Bowser Skylander, part of his base struck me with with some inspiration to make a Bowser Jr. variant. The clown car really converts into so many cool different things. And we did all the other Koopalings, so why not give Bowser Jr. a turn? I traced the shape of the Skylander base with a pencil on the bottom of the Bowser Jr. clown car, and then used my rotary tool to grind away the unwanted plastic. For Mario and Luigi's clown car, I wanted to convert the lips into the spitting position of the fire clown car, so I removed the smiling mouth and used Milliput to fill in the hole, as well as the hole from where Bowser Jr.'s stand was. I also need to fill in the top so I have a nice smooth surface to apply the figure to. For the mouth of Mario and Luigi's clown car, I just made a little pancake out of Milliput and poked a hole into it with a toothpick. To ensure that it had the correct curvature, I applied them both to another Bowser Jr. that my three-year-old daughter customized. I used some water to make sure that the surface area was nice and smooth, and then reinforce the shape of the hole. <laughs> Looks like a pair of pubes. <laughs> Once my fire and ice spitting mouths are dry, I can attach them right to the clown cars with some super glue. For the Bowser Jr. custom, I was really flying by the seat of my pants and just kind of made the necessary adjustments as I was going. When it came to adding the wheels, I figured what better wheels than from Bowser himself. So I swiped them from the Mario Kart Bowser Happy Meal toy. I'm sure I could have just broke it apart, but I didn't really know how the wheels were attached, so I wanted to preserve it as much as I could. Problem was, it had these weird triangle screws. Luckily, the pliers fit in there perfectly, and I could twist them right out. The scale of the wheels looked great, but the bar was just a little bit too short. So after I drilled a few holes in the base, I snipped the wheel bar in the center and used them to plug in the holes. Vroom, vroom. Yay, it still works. When Bowser's clown car is in all-terrain mode, it sports a pretty serious expression. So rather than completely re-sculpting it, I just used my X-Acto knife to carefully trim off the upper portion. And the expression of this clown car is more of a frown. A frown is just a smile turned upside down. So I can use that same mouth flipped over, but I am gonna have to fill in the gap with some Milliput first. I'm not gonna make any adjustments to the Bowser Jr. figure, but I do need to repaint that clown car. So rather than remove him, I'm just gonna mask him out. Bowser Jr.'s clown car has these four panels that lift up when he deploys the wheels. So I'm gonna make him out of a plastic spork. I've got a lot of experience working with these things from the Koopalings. They're really strong, really flexible, and they're a really good match for the clown car. All I did was cut four of them into shape at the point where the curvature matched how I wanted it to be, to be glued on later. To keep my clown cars really smooth and ensure that I wouldn't have any brush strokes, I painted them all with spray paint. For Bowser and Bowser Juniors, I pretty much wanted to just restore the look that they already had. So first I hit them with a primer, I used a gloss white, and then I hit them with a pearl. For Mario, I used a yellowish tone, and then I added that same pearl essence. For Luigi, I used an ice blue first, and then I hit him with the pearl. I cleaned up the gold bases so that I would have a nice clean surface to reapply the clown cars to. With the fresh coat of paint on my clown car, I can reattach Bowser Jr.'s clown frown. The fire clown car is a relatively new variation added through a Mario Maker update. And ever since I first saw it, I knew I really wanted to make one. I used red paint for the upper rim and the propeller. As of this point, an ice clown car is really just a figment of my imagination, but I thought it would be fun to stretch my creativity a little bit and try to imagine what one would look like. For the upper rim, I decided to use a blue, and the same for the propeller. For Mario, Luigi, and Bowser's clown car, I mixed up an orange tone that I felt matched Bowser Jr.'s pretty well. I hit BJ's wheels with a little bit of red. I have this really cool collection of Mario Kart figures from when I was much younger, and my kids and I really love playing with them, but my son's favorite game is Demolition Derby, so most of these exhaust pipes broke off. I figured this might be a good opportunity to repurpose it so it doesn't go to waste. I painted the cylindrical portion of green, as well as for some engine accents. I didn't really need to change the color of anything on Bowser, but I really wanted to clean up those shoddy paint lines. So I started by touching up his green. Bowser's eyes were what I really wanted to fix the most. I started by making a black circle slightly larger than the red eye he already had, so that once I dabbed the red back in, it would have this nice black outline. And then I used a little bit of white to add the highlight back in. I used some white paint to brush Bowser's teeth, since Activision seems to have forgotten. Yeah, what's up with that? Just because we're dark side doesn't mean we don't practice dental hygiene. I really wanted to level up his hair too, so I cleaned up the lines of his eyebrows and added some red highlights. I used a black gloss spray paint for Bowser's cannon, Bowser Jr.'s engine, and the bob -omb. I added the black eyes back onto Bowser's clown car. I painted the Bob-omb's eyes white. Then I used some black paint to add the eyes back onto Mario and Luigi's clown car. Instead of painting the little colored decal,
decals back onto the clown cars, I decided I would use some permanent markers and just draw them back on. I painted the eyes of Bowser Jr.'s clown car and dabbed on his decals, and I also glued his spork panels into place. The fire clown car has this flame pattern on the side, so I drew it in first with a pencil, then I outlined it with a thick permanent marker, and then I filled it in with some orange paint. I attempted to do the same thing with Luigi. Since there wasn't anything specific to base it on, I thought a snowflake would be appropriate. I outlined it in blue and then filled it in with white. It turned out okay, but honestly I was a little bit bugged by its lack of perfect symmetry, so I painted over my snowflake and then I convinced my very sweet and supportive wife to cut a bunch of this shape out of some white electrical tape. Then I just carefully stuck them onto the clown car in a symmetrical pattern and traced the outer edge with a blue permanent marker. Hey, it's a snowflake made out of a bunch of teas! That's cool! Get it? Cause it's a snowflake? And they're cold? Hey, get it already! Shut your word hole! And I gotta say, I'm much happier with how this one turned out. I started on Bowser's armor and hammer with some gray primer. Then I coated the armor in silver, as well as parts of the hammer and Bowser Jr.'s exhaust pipes. Then I used a little bit of dry brushing to dust some silver onto Bowser Jr.'s hubcaps. That allows me to hit the outer lines without having to worry about it dripping into the rest of the wheel. The most tragic thing about Hammer Slam Bowser's armor is it really is a great sculpt and it has a lot of detail that goes unnoticed because it doesn't have any value or shading. A really easy way to bring that detail to light is a black wash. Cover the armor in some black paint that's heavily thinned out with water, clean your brush off, wet it, and then just push the paint around and it'll find its way into the grooves. It doesn't require a lot of skill or precision, so even if you're not that into customizing and you just want to pump your Hammer Slam Bowser up to the next level, this is a really easy option. And I repeated the same technique for the hammer. To keep Bowser cohesive and add some color, I'm going to make the spiked shells red, as well as the center of his armor. And then I'm going to make all the spiked bands black, like the collar on his neck, the band on the hammer, and his wrist cuffs. I'm going to make the red pop by adding black to the rim of the shells. I'm also going to outline the grooves within the shell. <laughs> that kind of looks like Darth Maul's head. Let's bring a rustic wood grain appearance back to Bowser's hammer by coating it in some brown. For some final detailing on Bowser, I'm gonna polish his spikes with some silver paint. I was looking over the remnants of my Hammer Slam Bowser and was struck with inspiration yet again. I wanted to see if I could trim off some of the flames of his base and attach them to the back of Bowser Jr. Turned out I could and it looks pretty awesome. There's not really a whole lot of room to operate between the spork panels and the wheels, so I needed to find something really thin to serve as the hydraulic mechanism. So wouldn't you know it, I went back to the plastic spork and this time I used the teeth. First I primed him in some black and then coated him in silver and glued them right into place. Plastic sporks! Who knew? Now you probably remember my daughter helped me customize a Bowser Jr. before. As I was laboring over these other customs, she asked me if I could put Peach in a clown car, which got me thinking, can I? So she contributed her little colorful clown car custom, and I set to restoring it for Princess Peach. Since Bowser had his bomb and his spiked hammer, Mario had a fireball, and Luigi had an ice ball, I wanted Peach to be able to brandish a cool weapon too. Since Toad is largely considered to be underrepresented in Smash, and Peach does brandish him as a weapon in the game, I thought this would be a really fun opportunity to tie him in. For this I used a piece from the Mario chess game. Toad is the rook in this version of the game, and also a perfect scale for the Peach amiibo. I wanted him to be suspended in Peach's arms, but he's too clearly in a standing position, so I'm gonna remove his feet. I'm gonna use a little bit of Milliput to smooth out Toad's diaper here. His shoes weren't really in the type of condition where it was worth trying to reuse them, so I just made a new pair of shoes and stuck them more to the front of his body. For Peach's royal clown car, I spray painted the rim and the propeller with a metallic gold, but for the cup of the clown car itself, I used a rose gold shade because that's kind of what I associate with her from Mario Kart. I'm not really sure how how well this video differentiates between the two shades, but it looks pretty great in person. Even though I didn't change the shape of the mouth at all, I removed it so that I could get a really clean gold finish. And then I super glued it back on. I'm gonna reuse Bowser Jr.'s hole, so there was no need to fill that in. It took a little while to sand off all those globs of paint, but eventually I got it pretty smooth. I did the eyes in black, but to give it more of a feminine flair, I added a couple eyelashes. I attached Toad to Peach's arm with some glue, but the weight of the figure was too much for how flexible the plastic is there. So I removed the arm at the shoulder and reattached it with a paper clip, but that proved to still not be enough support. So I decided I would run a paper clip all the way through the arm, which was kind of difficult to do. I softened the arm in some boiling water and poked a hole in either side with a thumbtack. It was a slow and careful process, but I was eventually able to run the paper clip all the way through the arm. But it was totally worth it! Because now it has more than enough support for our mushroom man and I can bend it to any angle I need to. Now because I want all these amiibo to function as their specific character, I do need to take out all the Bowser Jr. amiibo chips. This wasn't required with any of the Koopalings since they are all essentially just variations of Bowser Jr. But since these are different characters entirely, it requires this added step. For this, I like to use a really thin butter knife. I can wedge it between the two pieces and pry them open, and I have a pretty high success rate removing them without doing any damage, even though there's a tremendously wide range of variety in how tightly they're attached. Some of them pop off no problem, and some are glued so tight they're practically fused together. I know some other people like to use box cutters or X-Acto knives because the blades are really thin and sharp, but keep in mind they will snap because they're not forged to withstand pressure from that angle, and for that reason I avoid it. One helpful tip, however, is to concentrate your effort, at least with the Smash series, 
at the shorter side of the thick line. Now you may remember from the first episode of the Koopaling miniseries that I used a thumbtack to change the angle, but since there was never any reason to remove the NFC chip, I didn't have the same kind of access to the bottom of the gold portion of the base. Since I had to remove them for this one, I used a considerably more secure means of connecting them. POWER TOOLS! I drilled into the base at the depression in the center circle, which is directly in line with the clear rubber support beam. I made sure I had the clown car positioned at the angle I wanted, and then I used a flathead screw to secure it into position. I used a longer screw for Bowser Jr. since I had a lot more that I needed to hold together, but otherwise I just repeated the same process for the the other ones. Screw you, Mario! Like, literally. Until they were all locked at exactly the angle I needed them to be. And with that, our clown car custom adventure comes to a close. In addition to making the custom clown car collection, I also made a series of custom clown car collection character cards. Say that 10 times fast. If you want to use this box art, feel free. You can find it in a link in the description below. And a huge thank you to everyone who sent in the pics of your custom creations. Let's take a look. Throughout the course of the season, we've had the honor to feature over 130 of your custom works of art. You've all really inspired me, and hopefully I've managed to, in some small way, do the same for you. Last time, if you recall, we announced that we were going to be giving away a custom Koopaling card collection. The seven card set of all seven Koopalings. Well, let's get right to it. The winner of the custom Koopaling card collection is... Karate Cutie 96 Yay! Congratulations. Look for a message from me on Twitter real soon. I really enjoyed putting these episodes together, and I want to thank you for coming on this custom conquest with me. As you know, this is our season finale, but whether or not it's our series finale, well, that kind of depends on you. To see how you can join the battle to help keep this show going, check out our Patreon page. Between the Koopa Kids and this custom clown car character collection, I think we've exhausted pretty much everything I ever want to do with these clown cars. In fact, I'm permanently retired from clown car customizing, I think it's safe to say. But I've got a ton of great custom ideas that I can't wait to explore, and I hope I get to share with you. We'll see you next time. If there is a next time. Thanks, Thanks for, for playing. playing. Dark side out. Hey, cool. It's the Patreon credits. What? Toys for Games cast? I hope Noise heard every single insult I made about Skylanders. Well, that's it. Thanks for a great season, everybody. And good luck with all your custom conquests. See ya.